Recently, I put out a video on my Poison Spark Pathfinder, a build that is an excellent all rounder. Now, if you want to know more information about the build, I do suggest checking out that after this. And if you want to know what I'm doing to continue to min max it, a process that is exorbitantly expensive and absolutely not required, get subscribed as I'll be talking about that in a future upload. But for today's topic, there was something missing from my build guide, and that is how I crafted my weapon. Now, in this case, I will be crafting a poison spark weapon, which is pretty niche. However, the same method can be applied to a broad range of other items, be it a scepter for an ignite build, a righteous fire jug weapon, or anything for pretty much any caster in the game, though a little more on how to adapt it after I've explained the method. For poison spark, you want a few things on your weapon, level of all skill gems or level of lightning skill gems. This will kind of depend on whether you're above or below level 30, but in most cases, you do want it. Then, lightning damage to spells is another good prefix, rounded out with either chaos damage or lightning damage. Since you're converting from lightning to chaos, either one works. For your suffixes, there's kind of a lot to choose from. Cast speed is great, since it means you cast faster, thus putting more dots on the target. Chaos.multi or dot multi increase your damage done. And something like projectile speed feels really good, while well, it might not show up on your tooltip, it's definitely a nice to have. For base, you've also got quite a bit of flexibility. If you wanted a chance to roll that proj speed, go for Tornado Wand. It adds lightning damage to spells and attacks. If you want generic Ellie damage, go with something like a Void Scepter for 40% increased elemental damage. And if you want elemental overload, something that's key to the build, which can be gained either through a Crucible Tree or through the High Space Oscillating Scepter. I think for most people, Oscillating Scepter is the correct answer. It's simple, it has low attribute requirements, and you'll probably be able to get an item level 86 for a few chaos after the first couple days of the league. But if you want to get fancy, a Fractured Base is also a pretty good idea. For example, my wand was a Fractured Chaos dot multi weapon or this scepter is fractured level of all lightning spell skill gems. That said, there's often a lot more expense to using fractured weapons like this, and not necessarily all that much upside. Most of the time, it means that you need to roll elemental overload on your crucible tree. EO is pretty rare and somewhat expensive, so that's going to be a bit of a pain. Now I did, and it was absolutely worth it for me, but unless you have a point of min maxing where you want those extra couple percents, I would absolutely stick with an oscillating scepter. It should be noted that the crafting process is largely the same for all of these weapons, but if you have something like fractured plus level of all lightning spell skill gems, you'll roll your essences until you hit a good suffix, thus skipping the ashling step that I'll cover in a little bit. So now that I've talked about base selection, how do you go about crafting it? Deafening Essence of Torment to add flat lightning to spells which you can see on my current weapon. You want to roll that until you hit either level of all spell skill gems or level of all lightning spell skill gems. From there, if you happen to hit a good suffix and you're able to annul down, then cool, multi it and you're good. Or if you want to get a little bit fancy, you do prefixes can't be changed plus ashling. The veiled affix will either be a prefix or a suffix. You unveil and go from there. A little more on that in just a bit. For now, let's start rolling some essences. So here we have an example of an extremely messy weapon. Lightning damage to spells and lightning spell skill drums we want. Everything else needs to go. And unfortunately, there's nothing to do but gamble with the annuls. It's dead. Time to roll again. All right, this is a really interesting outcome because we have the electrocuting and magisters as prefixes but then pretty bad suffixes. Luckily, this is not an issue. You can easily remove the suffixes with prefixes can't be changed for two divines and then scouring the item. So just come over to the crafting bench, prefixes can't be changed, come back over here. To prevent mistakes, always grab a single scouring orb unless you really trust yourself. And there you go. Now, it's time to apply prefixes can't be changed yet again. This time, bring it over to Ashling. The reason that you wanted to craft prefixes can't be changed is because Ashling 4 removes a modifier and adds a veiled modifier. 
If prefixes can't be changed, but there's an open mod slot, it could add a prefix, it could add a suffix. That part's just RNG. But it can only remove the meta craft. It will never remove your existing prefixes. So now we have to do something interesting. If we got a prefix, we just unveil it. But since we got a suffix, we get to block something. In this case, attack speed. Since this is a fairly high weighted modifier with multiple outcomes. Now I put it in here and I unveil. The options are chance to deal double damage, which is really good for someone else, increased damage per power charge, which is good for basically nobody, and 40% increased crit strike multiplier while a rare or unique enemy is nearby. You have effectively two choices here. The first is to pick any non-caster mod, because right now, the only two mods that you have are Lightning Damage to Spells that has the caster tag and Level of All Spell Skill Gems, which has the caster tag. If you picked any of these, none have the caster tag, you could come back over here and do Cannot Roll Caster Modifiers, then Annul. The Annulment Orb will either hit the Cannot Roll Caster Modifiers, costing you one Divine, or it will hit the Unwanted Veiled Modifier. And then you would reveil it and do it again. The other market dependent option would be to select something like the chance to deal double damage. And then you multi mod the item, put it up for sale, and hopefully make a tidy profit. Then you simply repeat the previous steps until you have a finished weapon which you can multi mod. One valuable veiled affix, such as the cast speed arcade surge hybrid or chaos.multi is another good suffix, lightning damage is a prefix, chaos damage is a prefix. Any of those things work. Alternatively, you can use a fractured base like I mentioned before. This time, you're still going to roll it with Essence of Torment, but you're not looking for plus gems as a prefix. You already have that. Now you're looking for a good suffix. Personally, the reason that I prefer this method is it's much more direct and it doesn't get into metacrafting. The end item should be roughly the same, maybe a little teeny bit worse, but overall still very usable. And right now, what I'm looking for is a good suffix, because I can always annul meta mod for the prefixes and have something that's functionally identical to an oscillating scepter that's been crafted this way. The only downside of doing what I'm doing right now is it probably won't work without Crucible, and the Oscillating Scepter is going to be really hard to replace when you're actually relying on it for Elemental Overload. So there we go. Damage over time multiplier, open prefix, open suffix chaos res. Here's where we have the world's riskiest annul. All right, I say it's the world's riskiest annul. It's really not that risky. Guess we go again that time. Oh, cold dot multi. Good dot multi. Not quite for one we want. After buying a few more essences, it's time to continue with the spamming. Remember, I'm looking for damage over time multiplier or cast speed as a suffix. And ideally T1, but a T2 roll isn't all that shabby either, especially compared to what you could craft yourself. All right, I hit 30% increased cast speed. But yet again, I have to take the spooky, spooky gamble. If this works, this is going to be a very nice item, but it could also explode spectacularly. And it's dead, which is really unfortunate. Okay, I am yet again out of essences, which demonstrates something important about this method. While you can get amazing results, especially hitting something like T1 cast speed, it is very unreliable. After trying all the different methods, making all sorts of different weapons, spamming for a suffix was costing me six to eight divines in the current market. Now, did I maybe get lucky? Did I maybe get unlucky? Craft of Exile will give you some averages. Ultimately, those averages say, yes, I did get unlucky. But remember, you have to hit a suffix and then win the one in four and null with a 50% chance to brick the item. So you're probably going to be losing a lot of those annuls. Just comparing each of these methods, the most reliable is actually this one. Oh, 
One minute, I got a quick sale here. This is something that I made on my crafting stream the other day. If you want to know more about how to craft in Path of Exile, definitely check that out after this. Alrighty, now that that sale's taken care of, time to talk about the comparison of different methods. Personally, I think the easiest is actually this, working off of a fractured suffix, then spamming Essence of Torment to hit level of all spell skill gems or level of all skill gems. From my experience, it takes somewhere between 40 and 100 essences to hit this, which at current prices is half a divine to one divine. Then you multi-mod and you're good to go. It's the simplest and most reliable method, but the upfront cost is the highest since a fractured suffix like this is expensive due to that reliability. Next up, you have the Ashling, which results in a weapon something like this. I hit the Ashling suffix for the Arcane Surge cast speed hybrid, and there's the two prefixes which I mentioned earlier, plus multi-modding. On average, this is going to take you a few attempts, and by a few attempts, I mean the total price will be probably around 10 divines. Again, you could get luckier, or you could get unlucky and spend 20 or even 30. But this does seem to be the next most reliable option, and without crucible trees, probably the one you're going to go with since you'll want to be crafting on an oscillating scepter. Now in Crucible, the best method is probably this, spamming for a really good suffix. On the one hand, you do lose out on something like Arcane Surge. On the other hand, you get much more cast speed for bosses, or you get projectile speed on a wand, chaos.multi on a wand, all sorts of really good outcomes. There's a reason these weapons are kind of pricey. And so the advantage of this is you don't have to deal with the Ashling at all. You spam essences, you annul, if you hit what you want, cool. If you hit what you don't, keep spinning essences and then you multi-mod, thus massively simplifying the process. But again, remember, you need elemental overload, which in most cases means using an oscillating scepter. Though in the current league, you can absolutely get EO on a weapon tree, which is pretty darn neat. And so uh, that's how I crafted my weapon for Poison Spark Pathfinder. Again, if you want to know more about crafting, do be sure to check out my crafting stream after this. Which of these methods is best for you depends on a lot of factors, so you'll have to price check things for yourself. If you can get a fractured base for cheap, that's probably a pretty good way to do it. If you absolutely need EO, I guess you're crafting on an oscillating scepter and using the method accordingly. And what if you're not building a weapon for Poison Spark? Then you might not need an Essence of Torment, you can just as easily spam Essence of Suffering for cold damage to spells and plus one to level of all cold spell skill gems, or Essence of Anguish for fire damage to spells and plus one to level of all fire spell skill gems. Many of the things with the suffixes will be exactly the same, at least if you're a hand caster. And maybe you don't want flat damage at all, you want increased. In that case, I'd go Essence of Fear for minions deal increased damage. Assuming you can allocate or anoint spiritual aid, this will apply that damage to whatever skill you're using. So, as you can see, this crafting method is quite flexible and can make a very wide variety of items. But with that said, I'm curious. What other things do you commonly find yourself saying, how do I craft this? And do you know of any crafting methods that can answer a question like that for anyone else? If so, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as one dollar a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. If you're still hungry for more content, then maybe check out my crafting stream or go with a full Poison Spark build guide. And be sure to get subscribed, then keep an eye out for my unethical, disgusting, min-maxed Poison Spark character. But for now, thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.